What's going on, everyone? Lauren Sisler here with AL.com, joined now by John Talty with big breaking news coming down today. Talty, you've been on this since day one. The SEC has announced what the 2020 college football season is going to look like. Um, you sort of have the slate and how all that transpired. Tell us more about the schedule um, and how this is going to work and when we will learn more about sort of the um, transition into this new era of college football while we're in the midst of this pandemic. Yeah, so the SEC's presidents and chancellors met virtually today to discuss different scheduling options. The one that they decided on and, and voted on was a 10-game uh, SEC conference-only schedule, which eliminates all the uh, non-conference games. So, for instance, Auburn, UNC, that game's gone now. But So you're losing a couple of those non-conference games, but what you're going to be getting are two additional SEC games um, for – uh, each team and you know some of those discussions are still fluid right now but they at least have a pretty good sense from my understanding that you know they're not going to um, get rid of the divisions you know the ACC for instance is getting away if it's going away from its divisions this year um, as part of their new scheduling the ACC isn't likely to do that uh, but they are still kind of working through some different scheduling models uh, and the other big thing is that they're moving some things back and so the season now is slated to start on September 26th uh, they have moved the SEC championship game back to December 19th. And so, you know, typically we're looking at Labor Day weekend for when we're kind of getting ready for football season. And instead, you're going to have to wait a couple extra weeks uh, this time around for the SEC. But that's kind of what they decided as the date that made the most sense for them. Um, other conferences are doing some other things, but that's kind of what the SEC landed on. And it now gives them you know weeks to a monitor the data, see the way that things mm -hmm. are trending with the coronavirus and also just kind of get a better sense for what they need to do to be able to pull off a successful season. Yeah, and I think that kind of transitions into our next question because number one, I think we all know and are aware that this is still a very fluid situation. So while this is sort of the model and they're sort of testing things out and seeing where things are at, we really had to come to a decision. I mean, it was decision time. They wanted to practice patience. That was what uh, you know Greg Sankey has said all along, Pat, patience is key. They didn't want to make the decision too prematurely. They wanted to have as much data in place However, a lot still can change, um, but this at least gives us a good foundation for what to expect as teams are starting to get ready to go back to camp and start getting ready for um, the, the fall football season. So again, I mentioned you've been on this story since day one. You essentially broke the news today and how this was all gonna transpire. What can you tell us about the thought process that really led the SEC to this decision? Yeah, I mean, I think they debated a bunch of different models, some of them which included you know, having maybe one uh, non-conference game to the extra conference games. And ultimately, I think what pushed the SEC to the direction it did was that it just, it allows them a lot more flexibility and essentially potentially less headaches by having it all controlled, you know, just within the SEC. You know, for instance, Major League Baseball right now is having to move different games around. And, you know, they're able to do that because it's all one league. Well, in college football, there's a bunch of different kind of separate leagues all under one overall, you know, uh, football and so they it makes it a lot easier for them to just do what they need to do if they have a postpone a game they have to cancel a game they're dealing with all schools they already deal with they don't have to then mm -hmm. coordinate with the acc or the sun belt or anything like that whatever testing protocols they decide on they can do it across the board if they have protocols about fans in the stands which i expect at some point across the board they don't have to worry about the acc having a completely different you know policy about fans and so ultimately takes away a lot of the variables that come with dealing with multiple different conferences and just allows them to focus on what makes the most sense for the SEC. And I think that's ultimately, even though why, even though there were some schools that would have liked to have had, you know, maybe that extra conference game, non-conference game to keep a rivalry, this is what the, the league as a whole decided was the best path forward. So as of right now, we don't really know what the, the stadium is going to look like, per se, at this point when the season does, in fact, kick off. Is that correct? Yeah, that's something that they're discussing right now. I think they're getting closer to what that might look like. But I think, again, part of what the benefit of pushing back the season to September 26th is, again, it now buys you multiple weeks to monitor that. So yeah. if – you know, if the trend, if the coronavirus data starts going in opposite direction, maybe it's zero fans. If it starts getting really good and they feel really mm -hmm. positive, maybe you can start allowing more fans in. And so this is just gives them some more leeway. I don't think they have to make that decision. You know, today's what, July 31st? Like they don't have to make that decision today. They have some weeks to kind of figure out exactly when they need to make that call. Yeah. And so I think the, the million dollar question has certainly been, are we going to have a college football season? And then the follow up question is that what is it going to look like? And so it looks like the pieces are starting to be put in place here. We're starting to see more of a vision for what we might be able to expect. And so 
Um, you know, one thing that I guess that's kind of interesting to me is that the ACC did release their schedule yesterday. So you kind of knew that the SEC schedule was probably going to be hot on their heels. You had kind of reported that yesterday. And of course, the ACC going 10 games, one non-conference. Interesting, though, they, they're they going to start the weekend of September 7th. So really, they're only pushing it back a week. I think it's interesting to note that the SEC is going to push it back to later in the month of September. Again, like you said, buying more time and giving us a little bit more opportunity to sort of um, lay the groundwork for what the data points might state and, and helping us to know what the stadium might look like as a whole and, and the schedule um, as well. So kind of getting into the postseason, I know this is looking way far ahead, but we know there is a date set for the SEC championship game, but questions still remain. Will there be any kind of postseason beyond that? Do you foresee there being a postseason for college football? And if so, what does that look like? So I talked to Nick uh, Carparelli today, who's the Football Bowl Association Executive Director, uh, pretty much about that exact question. And as of right now, they are absolutely going to try to have all those bowl games. You know, mm -hmm. whether we're able to have them, I think it's very much down the line. But he told me today that, I mean, they're closely monitoring all these different conferences, what they do. They have absolutely have the ability to be flexible and move things back. You know, like they have plenty of time to move things back right now. And I think they know they're going to have to potentially move things back. Uh, and be flexible because of just there's just going to be a lot of I think things that are going to have to get changed over the course of the season and so even though we now have a SEC schedule in place like it might have to change from where we start now to what it ends up being and so bowl games are going to have to be flexible in that regard but you know a there are big tv contracts for all those things and so ESPN and other networks they're going to want those games to be televised if possible and there's mm -hmm. a lot of money involved and th those bowl games pay out a lot of money and so there is a lot of, you know, we talk a lot about why we have football. Well, there's a lot of financial incentive to play football, and there's a lot of financial incentive to play bowl games. Now, will we have as many players as usual playing in them? Probably not. But as of right now, they are always saying that they want to try to do things as normally as possible, you know, even if there's no fans there. Yeah, and so I think the big two key factors in this whole process have been patience, number one, and being nimble. And so I think that's kind of where – you, you have to be prepared to kind of make adjustments. And I think that's probably, you know, where the commissioners and the presidents and, and all the decision makers have really put their heads together and, and kind of developed this plan that really is a moving target. And I think it will continue to be. Um, just as we wrap up, I want to ask you, what can we expect in week number one for both Alabama and Auburn at this point? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I and mean, we can look at who they maybe were initially slated to play. You know, Alabama is going to play Georgia pretty early on in uh, the season. Is that going to be the first SEC game of the season? I have some doubts that it would be. I don't know if that's necessarily the game that you want to kick off. And those are your two, you know, top teams essentially in, in the conference. I don't know. I mean, it'd be a great first game to, for us to watch, but I don't know if the SEC wants to do that. So they're right now, they're working on some different scheduling models. You know, I've heard some kind of different names have been thrown out. You know, Vanderbilt has been one of them about a team that Alabama could play. Maybe you throw that game early on and push the Georgia game back a little bit. I think I think everything's kind of on the table. I think the that the schools have a sense as to how things are going to look right now. But I think even the schools don't know definitively what it's going to look like because they still just, I mean, this was such a big first step to figure out how many games and when are we starting. Now that they have that information locked in, they can kind of adjust, okay, let's find a, the scheduling model that makes the most sense to do that and, you know, work around different, you know, things that might pop up in the future. Well, I think it's worth uh, taking a look. I was over on the Alabama website. Auburn hasn't changed theirs yet, but the Alabama football schedule, if you if you look down the line, it literally has already been updated. It says September 26th, um, Saturday is when the season starts. It says SEC in that far right column. So essentially, you know, they, they've already went ahead and up, updated the website. But every opponent, of course, says TBD, and then it goes down the line. So again, you know, exactly. I think this is a very fluid situation. And my last question is, any, any idea on what some of those replacement games might be um, at this juncture? Is it still, again, kind of a fluid process and something that they're weighing out? Yeah, I've mentioned Vanderbilt as one name that I've heard. With and we're going to have to balance, you know, the the teams that are already on the schedule um, with teams that you know they haven't played yet. So, for instance, you know, Alabama uh, not only playing SC West, but they also already have Georgia and Tennessee scheduled. And so, could they put Florida as one of their teams potentially? But that would seemingly give them, you know, the three toughest teams in the SEC East on their schedule. And I don't know if they necessarily want to do that from a balance standpoint. So I think they're going to take into account, you know, some of these teams, when was the last time they played them, kind of 
strength of schedule type stuff to try to come up with something that's fair. Um, and so I think that, you know, I, I think I've seen some different ones. Uh, South Carolina mentioned as one for, for Auburn. And so you're going to see some possible adjustments, some names floated out. But again, I don't think it's 100% decided as of right now. All right. Thank you so much. John Talty, of course, with the breaking news today, doing a lot of legwork. I know you've been working hard on this story. We've all been anticipating this announcement coming down. Uh, SEC announcing today it will have a 10-game conference-only schedule, and that will kick off on September 26th. So certainly, um, you know, news is good news, I guess. Everyone's kind of been anxiously awaiting uh, this news today. So again, Talty, thank you so much for your diligence and getting uh, this story to us. We appreciate it. And of course, um, keep checking back to AL.com for all of your updates on college football.